like as people are trying to wrap their heads around this whole thing, I think it would make it simpler. Sure. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Okay. Cool. Uh, so we have an agenda and I think a very interesting topic that we definitely need to address right away is why are we out of credits in CI? This seems a bad situation. Is that, is, are, are all jobs failing right now? Um, at least one of I think we have a few credits, like probably whatever the free tier is, but like I, I just looked at it in like seven of the last eight on master. Uh, all right. So I don't know. Uh, well, what, what we should do is I got an email going with our account manager. So after this meeting, mm -hmm. I'm going to email and figure out like we should be on a credit card. And that credit card should be paying for new credits. <laughs> um, uh, it's, right. It's possible that the card got declined or there's some other thing going on. Okay. So I, I will send an email and CC everyone um, right after this. Awesome. Oh, God damn it. Okay. So let's let follow up for that. Cool. Uh, Dr. Chad in buffers? Yes. Yeah, I just wanted to see if anybody's been canarying the new buffer thing and if we can just pull the trigger and get rid of it. I know that I promised that I would and I didn't. Um, so, and I'm, I'm going to a conference tomorrow and then I'm traveling this week. So realistically, it would be next week before I could play with that. Um, I think some of the Pinterest folks had also agreed to do that. So I, I, I don't know if we want to follow up with them and ask if they had done that. So uh, yeah, I'm Cynthia from Instructure. Um, we've been using the new buffer implementation in production for a couple of weeks, for oh, about great. a week and a half now. And it's been working fine so far. Haven't noticed anything too crazy. How much, how much traffic are you putting through it, if you don't mind me asking? Yeah, right now our, our usage is is fairly small. So we're, I mean, you know, we're seeing peaks of about a thousand requests per second, which is pretty small for us. Um, so it's it's definitely not heavy usage. So I wouldn't take it as you know the only source, but it is it is more than zero. Yeah, I, I mean, thanks. That's a that's a great vote of confidence. Um, I, I would still love a couple more people <laughs> to to do do some quick testing, though. I I I think what we could do right is like we're we're not going to delete the old implementation. Like we're still going to have the runtime flag. So I guess, Josh, do you want to just flip the default? Like I think that's probably fine. Um. Sure. I can, I can write up here to do that. Yeah, I also think that that one might should... be worth on point now too. Do you think? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I would, I would definitely put it in the release notes and send an email and all of that. But as long as people can revert it, uh, it seems fine to yeah. to flip it. Just verify that there are no outstanding fuzz issues with it. I think we didn't th find any, but we should just verify that. Is that something that you could just take a look at after the meeting? I'm just doing it as we speak. Oh. So. okay. Yeah, on the on the bug, uh, Azra said that there haven't been any issues so far. Okay, that's good. But that was twenty seven days ago. Oh, Ezra from Pinterest, or no, that's oh, Ezra. oh that's what the fuzzing gosh, Sorry, I was hearing Ezra. Cool. And Derek, Derek Arguetta said that he's yeah, on the call. He's here. Oh, yeah, he's Derek, here. Derek. Hello, Derek. Are you here, yeah, Derek? Say we can, good, how are you? Hey. Um, yeah, I was going to say we can try to canary the buffer implementation in the next few days. That was also something on my plate, which kind of got pushed on the back burner. Oh, that would be awesome. Thanks. Yeah, it, it's, it's something that I can possibly do in the next couple of days, but just being realistic with my travel schedule, pro probably not. Um, I can definitely do it by next Monday, but it seems fine to go ahead and just flip flip the defaults. And if we find any um, you know issue, we can always flip it back. Yep. Cool. Okay. Uh, what else? Other stuff? I can't think of anything. 
Okay, CI issue. Um, so we are, so we flipped the coverage over, right? So now, yeah, so, so, so we don't, we don't use GCC for anything anymore, right? Because it's too slow. Like, is that, is that what has happened at this point? I think. Um, the release builds have moved over then. Yeah. Good. Yeah. We migrated coverage. So yes. Okay. That's fine. I mean, if GCC is that slow, I guess that's life. But uh, I, I guess my only concern there, and this is not something that, that we should action on, is just that I know that I've seen PRs from like people at Intel and other folks mm -hmm. that keep fixing things that are breaking on like GCC 9. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't, I don't know how to reconcile this, right? Because like we have, we have limited resources. So there's only so many builds that we can do. Uh, it's yeah. like, we're, we're obviously never going to cover every compiler. Um, but right, we didn't come cover GCC nine anyway. So. Yeah. What I'm, what I'm wondering if we should do, and I know that you and I had talked about this at some point is, and maybe we can just open an issue to track is to use GCC just to compile the server and don't run tests because the tests are what take forever. Um, and that would at least, you know, that would at least show up like obvious issues in production code. Um, mm -hmm. And that shouldn't take that long. So that might be something that we could consider. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just open an issue to track that. All right. Um, I will make an, or I'll put that in the meeting notes and we can figure that out. Hold on. I'm making a note of that. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. It looks like you were typing also. Uh, okay. Um, did you did you want to talk publicly yet about the runtime guard stuff, Alyssa? That that you had sent Slack messages about, or is it too too early? I mean, we can. I think. I think we're just in a state where we we think we're going to move towards tr encouraging runtime guarding, um, visible like changes to the data plane. Yeah. They're like adding headers or moving headers or yep. whatever. Like, default default to guarding it. Yep. Uh, I don't think we're at the point where we're going to put that in governance yet because um, we we found a couple of small issues and we just want to make it as easy as possible before we ask people to do it by default. Yep. I think that's fine. I I think my, my only comment there is we're going to need to better define like during code review, you know, what is the data plane? Right. Like what qualifies as a thing that we would want to run time guard because I'm assuming that, you know, we don't need to run time guard bug fixes, but it's unclear. Right. So like, I, I think, I, I think that we just need to have some guidance in terms of what meets the bar so that when people are doing code reviews, like we can make sure that we're, no, I think we'll talk it up. And I think this will be one of those launch and iterate things. I mean, we literally do guard a bunch of our bug fixes internally, but like, I think we've gone over the top. And right. I, don't, I don't want to encourage Hanva to go as far as we have. Right. And I that's... We'll start with something and then... and then Yeah. And, and I, I think that we've talked about this off and on over the last year or two. And I, I have no conceptual objection. I just... I just want to make sure that we don't go too far over the top and then it becomes like a giant pain in the ass for not, not that much benefit. Um, so I'm hoping that we can hit a happy medium. And I, I think just having, having some structure in place of how to think about whether we want to put the guard in or not, like would probably be useful. Yeah. And then I think also maybe even hand waving about default true versus default false, you know, something yes. like with buffers you know, we, we want to default off and test carefully. Whereas, you know, like a, a something that we think is innocuous, like removing yeah. those from headers, which turned out to be disastrous. Yeah. Again, you know, we could, we could default yes. true that people could roll it out. If it caused problems, yeah. people can time flip it off. And I also think that it's completely reasonable to like, once we get the ability in the bot to require code reviews, like for particular sections of the code, mm -hmm. I think it's reasonable, you know, to have a set of reviewers that must review either the TLS code or the, or like the codec code or something like that. Um, but even there, I mean, like, we're just going to have to figure out like what code requires what, and just to make sure that we don't block on any single person. Totally. 
So is that something that you feel like you would want to take a straw position on a proposal at, at some point um, in, in terms of policy or? Oh, yeah, no, like, I'm driving this. I've got one fix out that, um, that the Square folks found uh, and I've got a fix that I don't love and I'm gonna send it out as a discussion point. Okay. Uh, and then once that's in, I'll, I'll take a stab at governance. Okay. Okay, and great. We'll start with like a encourages for a quarter. And then again, as we flesh out more issues, we'll make it stronger. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's less even about encourages and requires. I'm more just concerned about like what, like, what are we guarding and who, who has to approve? Um, and I think as specific as we can be there and get that open for discussion, probably the, the better we'll be. Okay, cool. And I, and the fixes that you're working on, just so I understand, is the stuff that we had talked about so that we can use the static runtime guarding uh, either in like the test code or the production code. Yeah, so my, my example CL, which works great and solves a problem for Envoy, is essentially saying, okay, if, you know, for the integration tests, if you're not a runtime, if you're not a worker thread, you can still check runtime. Yeah. But then it occurred to me for people who have hybrid binaries, including some people that I care about, yeah. um, that uh, will still want it to work. So yeah. all the, the PR that I pointed to you got the, uh, this morning that um, uh, empty headers, right? When we concatenate, it just has yeah. a comma. Yeah. Like that if, if say, Google happens to yeah. deploy a binary that has not on my threads, of course. And yeah. the headers, it would have the same crashing problems, I think. Like I want to land this as is to just fix a test code problem, but that's then fine. We need to have a solution for people who have non-worker threads that still want to access runtime. So like, they yeah, have headers across the on the worker threads and the non-worker threads. So right. I don't know what that looks like. So again, I'll send out the test CL. Yeah. That's on there how to do the. the okay. Real. Yeah. Let's let's maybe brainstorm offline. Like just thinking off the top of my head, I'm wondering if since this is such an important case, if we could have some kind of. Uh, function where like a non-worker thread can register for right. runtime and then it would be hooked up to the same plumbing and then it would just work effectively. Uh, that, that, that seems like something that we could build, I, yeah. I think. And the question is, do we want it to happen automatically, which I think we do. Like, I think basically if you ask for runtime snapshotting and not a worker thread, you might, we might auto register you or something, but again, we something can like that. Right. But like some, some ability to hook yourself in, even if that first time it requires locks or something else, like, I feel like we could, we could make that work exactly. and that, and that would be pretty slick because at that point, I think like what I'm trying to get at here is that we have people that want to consume runtime in different ways, like people that want to use flags or the disk thing or whatever. And I think if we do this cleanly, we can allow consumers to like toggle these flags in whatever way they want, which yeah. seems optimal. Yeah. Okay, great. All right. Um, I guess the only other announcement is um, we, we got the CFPs back for the conference. They look amazing. Um, if anyone out there wants to be on the program committee and we have, you haven't already uh, raised, your, raised your desire, please let us know. Uh, we'll be starting to look through the proposals soon. Oh, also, um, a uh, shameless plug for sponsorships. Uh, we're still looking for sponsors for the conference. So there's opportunities for like things around sponsoring lunch or breakfast or stuff like that. So if you're out there and you're interested in sponsoring, that would be cool too. I've started to poke around to see who the people here are. That... Oh, awesome. Thanks. Yeah. Um, I'm... I'm I'm hoping that we can find people out outside of Google to to do that. So um, I I don't think it should be too too bad. Awesome. And and it's it's approximately five k that we would want for a sponsorship. Is that? I th you know that's more Chris's domain. Like I think there's different amounts. I think that we could be flexible, probably uh, d depending on depending on what people want to sponsor and probably what they want to get out of it. Um, so I, I think just if you're out there and you're interested in potentially sponsoring, um, just circle back with us privately and we can, we can figure out what's possible.
Cool. Okay, done. I think so. Anyone have anything else? Okay. See you next Bye. Time. Yep. Yeah.